Here's, here's the problem, you know, is that um, when you, it's not so much sales, but brainwashing that was going on. And, and when you're brainwashing people or trying to create a certain culture or a thought culture, right? There's these two sides to it. it. It's number one, the constant reinforcement of one message. It's a constant reinforcement of barning a message. Danger, danger, you know, death, death, death. Uh, you stay home, say, you know, stop every world is changing. Right? But there's another side to it too. You have to squash all other competing messages. And that's where the platforms came in. Mm -hmm. And they literally stopped free speech and they made it so you could only hear one message. And that brainwashed people. <laughs>
It was like I came down to Florida. It was like free at last, free at last. Right? Were you shocked? Like even every day that I've been here, I'm like, man, I can't believe it. I feel like I'm waking up in a dream every day. I gotta tell you, I, I got in some trouble on 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 the was it Instagram and the YouTube. I got my stuff taken down for saying that. What do you do? What lockdowns do you do? don't work. Oh. But it's but they proved what you, it. What are you anti science? I know, right? But it's like ridiculous. Like I was saying things. Like, it's my opinion. I'm like, I think that you're locking down the wrong people. I think we should lock down older people who are who who really would get affected and let the people who are healthy go out and work and all the money they were going to save. We can. Take the old people, give them caviar and flame mignon and champagne the rest of their lives. You know what I'm saying? Take care of the older people, but yeah. protect them instead of just locking everyone down, causing economic chaos. And it didn't work anyway. You know, the, the greatest thing, honestly, was Omicron, the last one, because it was so infectious that everyone just got it. So it was natural herd immunity. And that was really, I think, what ended this pandemic more than anything else was Omicron was so contagious. I was in Punta del Este, uh, Uruguay, for, for uh, New Year's. I think the whole, everybody in the whole island, that, you know, the whole area, it was, it was just, that's how contagious it was. And, you know, but people weren't really dying from it. And it was, I think, you know, at least I think the best end you could have had to, hopefully, you know, it's the end, but to what was just, to me, like, almost like, a, how do I say it? It was like, almost like a Kafka-esque, like, series of, 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 of actions by world governments to do, I'm not sure even what they were trying to do. But do you think it's over? Like, to me, act two is coming. Oh, like, Faust, he's just dying. He's like, just, yeah. just can't wait, Faust. He's praying that, Ugh. you know, like, listen, I, I, I think that um, you never know. The difference with, 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 with COVID, and in the beginning, listen, it could have been the Spanish flu, but it wasn't. Yeah. And they, I don't know why they couldn't accept that. Like, like, it wasn't the Spanish flu. Like, the Spanish flu was a very different thing when people would just, like, literally, in, in the, you or I, in the prime, just drop dead. Just, like, that's and, it. And, yeah. like, it was, it was very different. This was, you know, something that was in a different level. But it was just almost like there was, like, this weird um, a global... I don't know if it's a conspiracy. It's like it's almost like this. It's like a madness is contagious. Almost like this mm -hmm. mass delusion that was happening, and I just still don't know why. I mean, I really don't understand it because it never made sense to me. Like, why? Okay, I get it. It's it's this, it's a real virus. People are getting sick, right? Some people are very very susceptible. But like when you looked at it logically, it just wasn't making any sense. Like loved ones being locked down in there. I don't know the counter on the screen. I mean, like what the fuck? I mean, like you, know? <laughs> you don't strike me as the type that would lock down very well. Like you need Please. you need people, right? Like you I, really I, need people. I, I was my my wife. Was going, <laughs> she was ready to kill me because like she's like she's. You know, she's yeah. a more buying citizen. You know, she's listening to the news. You know, yeah. she's, her English wasn't perfect back then. <laughs> so she's like, oh, she's saying death, 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 lockdown, lockdown, right? You know, and I'm like, people are coming over hugging them. She's like, what are you doing? She's like, Spr I'm like, listen, you're going to kill me from disinfecting. She's disinfecting the food. It's coming, spraying the freaking things with fucking like ammonia. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to die of ammonia poisoning, okay? Not from COVID, right? So she was really careful and I was just not. I literally went out and I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'd rather just get it. I wanted to get it because I wanted to become immune to it. And that's what happened, by yeah. the way, is I got it and I was sick for a couple of days and I'm you know, a very strong immune system and I got sick. I have no, nothing that would ever give me a predisposition. Like, I'm just saying nothing. I have a strong heart. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not overweight. I have, not, I have the right blood type. So it was like, hey, you know, let me get it. I got it. I was sick for a couple of days, nothing bad. Then I got it a second time. I only tested positive and no symptoms. And then, since then, I've literally walked into like COVID wards and I can't catch it anymore. Right? You know, so I mean, like, yeah. Not that I want to give these freaks any ideas, but when they bring COVID back, I just know they're bringing it back. Did they screw up something in the sales job? Because after the two weeks to flatten the curve thing, I kind of realized it was all nonsense. I knew the old world wasn't coming back. I didn't believe them. I didn't believe the body language, the messaging, the commercials, everything based on fear. I mean, should they have done something different? Sales? What should we watch out for, I guess, is what I'm asking you. Here's, here's the problem, you know, is that um, when you, it's not so much sales, but brainwashing that was going on. And, and when you're brainwashing people or trying to create a certain culture or a thought culture, right? There's these two sides to it. it it's number one, the constant reinforcement of one message. It's a constant reinforcement of barning a message. Danger, danger, you know, death, death, death. Uh, you stay home, say, you know, stop, every world is changing. But there's another side to it too. You have to squash 
all other competing messages. And that's where the platforms came in. Mm -hmm. And they literally stopped free speech and they made it so you could only hear one message. And that brainwashed people. But even that, I think there's, you know, listen, there's many people like almost had no choice. I mean, like the society just literally, you know, they, they virtue signal us to like to, to be rational people to death. But like, it was like, you were like, like you actually believe this shit? Like it was, it was ridiculous. Like, yeah. you know, you know, Am I going to believe my eyes or the nonsense I'm hearing in the, in the, in the press? And by the way, it's still going on right now with other things. Like I have literally, it just shocks me, like the lack of legitimacy on TV with the news. It's just, it's like, it was, what do we do? What, what do we do? Ukraine? About, I mean, like, that's what, just literally what Ukraine my show. Like, what's going on with Ukraine? Like, yeah. I think what Putin did was terrible, but there's, there's more than one side to the story for sure. Yeah. And, and, and uh, it's awful. It doesn't mean like that it's, it's the, that he shouldn't be, you know, um, you know, thought of as, you know, as a bad guy for invading a country, but it's just like, I don't know. Like, you know. Oh, so you're a Putin apologist. Yeah, exactly. Is that I'm a Putin it? apologist. That's it, Belfort. Putin. Yeah. You said something with nuance. I know. What are you, nuts? But, no, but I, I saw a really interesting interview with on Tucker, and I knew that before. Like I've been thinking this all along, and I didn't say it this time. You know why? Because it is a very difficult tightrope to walk. Because it's not my responsibility. It's not, I'm not that guy. Like I'm, that's not who I am. You know, it's, I'm not here to bring the news to the world. But if I was, I certainly would speak my mind more. But people are dying. It's awful. It's, it's fucking awful. What's going on there, right? But that being said, it is not black and white, and this guy Zelensky is no freaking, um, you know, he's no um, just a, you know, stellar, uh, you know, person that represents democracy. And he and, just banned 11 uh, political parties, lefty political parties. Why, but why is In the it, name of democracy. But why isn't the news talking about this? I think because they want to do it here too, and they're just running the test, the uh, test game. I mean, I know that all sounds nuts, but well, that, that's a good one. Is there anything that I could say or anything that you would hear that you'd be like, nah, that can't be right? Like that everything is so out of whack right now that it's like I, you'd I believe this anything. Is, this seems pretty obvious. This is the military industrial complex doing what they do best. War, weapons, destruction. Um, like this guy Zelensky is saying we're on the verge of World War III over Ukraine? Yeah, what? It's like not even a strategic point for us like why is ukraine what about what's going on in syria or yemen like there's all these other slaughters around the world yeah or what we did to iraq or afghanistan like I mean, there's like why is this suddenly why are we supposed to go to war and start world war three over ukraine as bad as i think what's happening in ukraine i'm not saying it's not terrible and i'm sympathetic to the, to the people and i've been to ukraine many times now amazing people but like you know like I'm not interested in starting World War III over this. What do you make of how they change the messaging so quickly? So like the State of the Union, it's like Biden does a half hour on Ukraine to start. As he's standing in there with no masks, Pelosi behind him, she's 900, he's 800. And that the average American is not walking around thinking about Ukraine that often. And again, that's not diminishing what's going on there and you can't just invade a sovereign nation. But like, how do they, the messaging of how they flip it, right? They flip it so quickly and get everybody's eye on something else. It's shocking. It's, it's, it's really shocking. And I think that the most shocking part is it was probably always like this. It's just that we live in a world now where it's very hard to not have things be transparent. The manipulation was always there. We always all I long for the days of Walter Crock. He was probably just as bad. You know, it's like, so I just think that right now it's like really hard to hide anything. So you have these sort of, you know, more discerning minds that are just saying bullshit. They call bullshit. And I think those minds were out there before, but they had nowhere to call bullshit. So you have social media about the platforms where people could have voices. So the dissenting at least gets out there somewhat before it's squashed. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because we've done each other's shows a bunch of times before. And whenever I, when I've had you go over for dinner or whatever, it's like we can do the politics thing. And it's funny to me that you sort of talk about politics, but you could, if you never talked about politics again, you'd be fine, right? I don't right? really, like, I don't, listen, I, I'm very much into politics, but it's not where I, you know, my heartbeat is not in politics. I, I intrigues me in the sense that, you know, it's the most corrupt, um, shockingly corrupt, you know, institution. And what's happened is, is that the press and the attack squads have created a paradigm where no one that really has anything good going would want to run it for office. Like Trump, I couldn't believe he did it. Like, I mean, I don't, maybe he didn't realize 
what he was getting himself into. But like, why would you run for office? Like, it's just the most evil thing that it's like they dig up any dirt that you have. They just try to, it's all about undermining you, tripping you up, discrediting you. It's, sh it's shocking. It's like almost like the Gestapo is on both sides just trying to destroy, destroy propaganda. And it's not about truth and it's not about making the country a better place. I, I really think that the U.S. has is, is, is seen its better days and, and ain't coming back. I, really? I, I don't think so. so. So do you see any way out of this? Like to me, I see that there'll be pockets out where we are right now. Miami is the future. Florida is the future. I think there's, there's like a base there and all the people moving and they get it why they're moving here, tech's moving here. I think there's a, there's a bullish attitude here, but I think a lot of it is gone. Do you, th do you think it's gone altogether or it's just going to so slowly let me, let me, disintegrate? Let me, let me restate yeah. that, what I mean. So no, yeah. there's, what happens is rich people, people that, not just the rich, rich, but just people that not to make money, they're always going to make money and they're always going to live good lives. They're survivors. People that are going to be really poor are always going to be dirt poor because they just... They have a, a dirt poor mentality. They, 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 they don't want to do anything to get themselves out of poverty. But then there's all these other people that really work hard in the middle class. Those are the ones that are getting squeezed yeah. the most. Those people having the American dream robbed from them. So like to me, it doesn't matter to me at all. It doesn't matter. You're always going to make a lot of money. You're, you're, you're at that point where you, oh, but, but you make a little bit more. It doesn't matter. You get the life you want. But I think what happens is it's the people in the middle that really, really suffer. And you know, the, you know, the dollar buys less and less. Job opportunities are becoming you know, scarcer and scarcer. And this wokeism, I think, is the death of, of so much liberty in this country. And it's like, I, I look at this, this class to me is the picture of the, of the swimmer. It says it all. You look at her, she's seven feet tall, and the little girls are cowering, and, and, like in, and people just don't stop that. Like The country has lost its moral compass. She has a penis, by the way. She does. She has a penis. She has a penis still? Yeah, she's still got the penis. So the girls in the locker room are not happy because she walks around and she's got a penis. Really? And we're saying she, right? Because you're trying to be respectful at some level. It's like right? a rudder maybe if when she yeah. swims. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, but like something, you know what I mean? It's like you're trying to be respectful. I, I know you, you are. What? It's, right, okay. so you're using the it's pronoun, not, but, but you're also mocking the reality of, we, this is a big dude who in effect is crushing these girls and, and the feminist. Terrible. Here's the thing though, like. You why, have, you have a daughter around that age, right? Why like, do I call her she? No, you know, if she wants to be called she, I'll call her she. It doesn't, like, it doesn't bother me. I don't care. Yeah. Like if that's what, if you want to be called she or, or, or a big fat galoot, I'll call you that too. I don't care <laughs> what you want to be called. Like I don't care about labels like that. So yeah. that makes her happy. Yeah. That makes her happy. I guess some people will say no, and she's a he and, and I won't refuse to do it. I, I don't care. Like I'm sympathetic. I want her to be as happy as she can or whatever you want to call her, right? But now it's at the expense oh, of no, the girl. No, now this is just nonsense. It's fucking pure nonsense. Yeah. And, every, and if you don't know that, you're sick. You're crazy. Like, if you don't know that that's patently unfair, it's beyond obvious, it's, it's, it's patently ridiculous, how could this be allowed? Do you think anyone really buys it or they're just all in on the mob and they're all in on it's, the group thing? Anyone that buys that is fucking brain dead. No, the brain, it's literally, it's part of something much darker and more evil. To have that woman or man, whatever you want to say she is, all right, competing as women that like worked their, like their whole lives to get to this spot and like one girl didn't make the cut. That's just, it's fucked up. Yeah. And there's no way, it's, it's just not fair. I said this, by the way, I came out and said this on uh, TikTok a long time ago, right when it first started, I came out. And by the way, I was genuinely support. I was genuinely supported. It was very, I got no hate on it. The only hate I think I got was from, from, um, from people, conservative people, because I said, listen, I'm, I'm socially liberal. I started saying I'm very liberal. But, I mean, this is not about that. This is about just fairness. And this is just, it's idiotic. And uh, I don't know why she would, or he would, like, what, it's an empty victory. Right, wait, so what were the conservatives getting on you for? For like- How could you say you're socially you, liberal? Oh, 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 got it. Because I am. I mean, yeah. I don't care who's fucking who, what, what, what do I care? <laughs> do I really give a shit, like who fucks who and what, the, like, I mean, re honestly, what, really, I don't care about that stuff. Uh, I said I'm prejudiced against two types of people, lazy people and stupid people. Everyone else? I'm okay with, you know? Yeah, I, I want to back up to something you said before about the government, because it was, it was making me think of Wolf of Wall Street. So the, the thing about the movie, I mean, the movie's so freaking brilliant. I won't make you talk about it, because you've talked about it a bajillion times. But 
you know, you base, you're the hero of the movie, obviously, and yet you're also doing some illegal shit, you're doing some immoral shit, right. or however you want to describe it. But you hate the feds more. You hate the people going after you more. And they're supposed to be the good guys right. in this, right? Because you're doing stuff with the penny stocks or whatever it is. And that, I think, sort of captures what you said about the government before. Like, they've done so much right. stuff now that, that it's sort of like the Sopranos. You're never rooting against right. Tony. He's killing people and you're right. still rooting for him. I Does that I, tell you I, something about how backwards everything is in an yeah. odd way? Oh, I, I think that the lines of right and wrong morality have been very much blurred. I think people just realize, for example, it's just my case specifically, like people know that like what I did was nothing compared to what they did at Goldman Sachs and, and right, Merrill right. Lynch. And these guys bankrupted Iceland and Greece and almost took down the entire world economy. And, and no one went to jail. Like, at least I went to jail for a couple of years and, and did my time, and like, I had to pay the price and I had to rebuild my life. Like, that was like a thousand times worse. Doesn't mean that what I did was right, but, but, but people also saw like this, like this sort of, you know, I think people like the almost the tortured soul type. Like, like I'm like, you're, you're watching me walk off the edge. Why you stop? Don't do it. Like, you know, so I think people yeah. see there was goodness in me, there was misguidedness in me, and, and I think people like that complexity, and you can root for someone who I think you feel like genuinely they're almost their own worst enemy. They're not out killing people. And even by the way, with Tony, it's Tony, you can root for Tony too. But like in this case, I'm not killing people, but you're saying, why, why? And, and I think people can see themselves in a, in a lot of the, um, of the characters in that type of movie. And that's Scorsese's brilliance, by yeah, the way. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, he doesn't moralize. He just puts characters up that are actually real and complex. And you're watching good people do bad things and bad and and people that are you know are terrible people do good things. When when you look back on all that, like are you just like even when you post pictures a lot of times on Instagram, you'll post pictures of of what you were doing back then, you know, 30 years ago, like what you were actually doing. Like are you like man, that was just freaking great. Even though, how, how long were you in jail for? 22 months. So oh, all right, it wasn't a terrible jail. A little more yeah. than Jesse Smollett, but yeah. yeah. Right. Oh God Almighty! Another character in that, right? Um, you know, one thing I'll say is that when I look back at what happened, the one thing I wish I did less of was the drugs. Yeah, the drugs did not enhance things. They corrupted a lot of things, and they made a lot of memories like really far less enjoyable and colorful than they should have been. For example, I've fallen asleep in the finest restaurants in the world. Like in, <laughs> see, I, I'm, I got booked for a speech in, uh, next month in Monaco, right? Yeah. And, and they got a beautiful suite at the Hotel de Paris, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, I fell asleep at the Louis XIV restaurant in a bowl of soup. And they, you know, it was $12,000 dinner. I can't remember it, but I remember it was all red and I felt my wife had to pick my head up out of the freaking soup, right? Yeah. So like, that was like the story of my life. So. That aspect, I look back and say, I wish I could have, you know, done things differently with the drugs. Um, but other than that, you know, when I, when I look at it, you know, I wouldn't change anything because it was, my, it was like what got me to this point in my life. Obviously, I made some mistakes. I had a lot of fun, did a lot of things right as well. Uh, but I think looking back at your life and trying to say, I shouldn't have done that. I don't think it's healthy. What do you think kept you going like that? You're not broken now. Like you're so thriving. It's every time I'm around you and everyone knows it, like you're infectious with your energy. This is exactly who you are off right. camera. Like you just freaking love life. Like what, how, did you ever get to a point where you were like starting to break or anything like that? Yeah, of course I did. I mean, I think that, you know, um, the worst part was before I went to jail. It's like you're dying in slow motion. And, and that's like where you, know, you can't- Cause you know you're going. And you right? can't restart your yeah. life. And you know, it's like, you know, it's like, it was like, I live in the big house still. They hadn't taken it. It's like Rome fly, the falling empire of Rome. Like if you're watching the house collapse or everything collapse around me, right? Um, you know, for me, the amount of pride that I took in rebuilding my life ethically, I can't tell you like what that meant to me. To go out and prove to myself, to my children, that was really not the world, to my children, that, that, like, that I would just go out right again and just do things so straight as an arrow and empower people all over the world and make even more money. And like, to me, that was like, and that just like, was like something that just kept me going in the early days. And it just snowballed and fed in itself and fed in itself. And, and um, yeah, my life today is far better than it ever was back in the craziest times of Stratton. Yeah, that's gotta be a crazy retraining, right? To try to do things fully on the up and up. We, we were gonna try to do something and I have a feeling we'll do something in the future. But even when we were in a little negotiations and then things just moved too fast, you were basically like, just give me something and I'll make it work. Like you didn't want to negotiate. You were just like, let's make it nice and easy. And then things just happened right. to so move I, along I, in a different way. But like. Was that a real shift for you? Like how you're going to do business? Like actually how you're going to engage in that? 
so yes and no. I, th I think one of the lessons I learned was that if you're a really good negotiator, right, and you negotiate a deal where it's so great for you and bad for the other people, that's not a good negotiation. Yeah. It just ends up in a lawsuit, a.k.a. Steve Madden shoes. Like when Steve came to me, he was very young. He was naive, and I took his company from him legally, and I took 85% because he didn't know better, and all that did was create animosity down the road. So I, I don't think a great negotiation is when you get such a good deal that you fuck everyone else over. And also, just like, I, I, just, I just refuse to cut corners. Like in my life, my value system right now is just it's simply, it's just, the, it's just based on creating value for people. So I, there's a reason why I haven't, I was, why didn't you launch any NFTs yet? There's a reason why I haven't launched NFTs because I'm not sure if the market is ready. And I don't know, I'll make a quick 10 million, yeah. but probably people who buy them might lose a quick 7 million. So I didn't do it. I, I, just did, I, I, I would love to have the extra money, but I have enough money. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, engage in transactions or any business practices that I'm not giving more value than I receive. And frankly, I've ended up making more money because of that. I'm, it's my greed shows me if I'm greedy, that means do that. Give people more value because you make more in the long run. When you see these insane policies of just printing money and then Biden comes out, oh, it has, inflation has nothing to do with printing money and it's not our fault, blah, blah. Like, like as a guy who understands business, you want to punch the screen or what? Yeah, so Biden's an idiot. I mean, um, and I think everyone knows that. He, but he's not, he's not even, a, he's a puppet. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like the movie's so bad. Like, it's like, Dave, we're like, let's find, where, Great can, we, movie. Great where movie. can we find someone so stupid and so malleable and just he's so much of a puppet? They're like, oh, there we go, right? To be clear, you're not talking about me, Dave. There was a movie, Dave, with uh, Klein. Like Kevin That's his Klein. Name. Kevin Klein, thank you. Right? Okay, yeah, great, great movie. movie, by the way. Yeah. So, Biden is a total puppet. And everyone, I think everyone knows this. Yeah. He's not making any decisions, right? And um, he says stuff that is, it's idiotic. It's just, it's just, it's like patently false. And anyone that knows the first thing about money and economics and the way the world works, a lot. it's like, it's just like, it's just silliness. And I'm not quite sure why he says it. I, I would think that people would coach him better. Um, I but guess. Do, you, do you think they, they actually, like, I've come to the position that I believe they fundamentally want to, I, I've said destroy, destroy the country. They, they either want to fundamentally destroy the country or alter it in a way that nothing that we've known about America will exist anymore. And, and the dream that eventually got our parents to be, you know, middle class in Long Island, and we grew up basically in the same exact spot, a couple years difference, like that dream of then us doing better is, they want to destroy that. Because they want us yeah. as cogs in the system. I'll, I'll tell you a, a, a little analogy here. So my wife's Argentinian, right? And the country was destroyed by socialists, by the Perones, the, per, the yeah. Peronists, right? And, um, and they're called Peronistas. If you're, you know, the party's Peronistas, right? My wife's family's wealthy and all those people are anti-Peronista, right? And I know there's one of them, of, of the group, it's mostly wealthy people, they're all on the right. There's one guy who's a Peronista. He's loaded. He makes money from the government. No, oh, you don't say. <laughs> so his, his gig, you get it? Yeah. He's a Peronista, but he's making all his money by budget and just stealing basically through, you know, unions and stuff like that. It's just the biggest hustle ever. Like, yeah. it's just a hustle. So, like, you know, they want that because it's just, it's literally people in power. There's so much wrong with our system right now. And, like, starting with term limits and professional politicians, like, these are all things that are just destroying the country from the inside. It's like a rot. And there's just like, and it's like, how could they, like, they pass this thing? Everyone has to get a COVID injection, but Congress? Like, how would, like, like I don't understand. Like, like they, it's like. They also gave themselves a raise this and, year because they're right? doing a hell of a job. But, but getting back to your point with, like, you know, with things he says about, you know, money and printing money and I'm mean, like, it, it's just a fact that when you like print money, it leads to inflation. And the worst part is the one thing that we have going for us over the last 50 years since the 70s when Nixon cut a deal with Saudi Arabia, stabilizing the dollar as the global reserve currency, oil would only be done in dollars in exchange for security guarantees to, to Saudi Arabia, right? That set the dollar firmly as the global reserve currency, the petrodollar, right? They're going to China now and pricing contracts in yuan. And by cutting off Russia from the banking system, I think it was the stupidest thing in the world. All you're doing is you're hastening the move away from the dollar as the global reserve currency. And once that's done, 
all bets are off because we cannot print money if we're not the reserve currency without having runaway hyperinflation. That's how we get away with it because we're the global reserve currency, so the rules don't apply to us. If other countries try to print money like that, then the World Bank comes in, oh, you're a scam. They, they shut the country down. They, you know, they, it goes into hyperinflation. They call in their loans. And we don't do that because we're a global reserve currency. That's good. And I think that's ending very quick and hastening because of the move with Russia. It was a huge error. Is, is the biggest issue that nobody really understands this? Like, that nobody really gets oh, I how think people any, understand it. Well, I guess a certain set of people do, but that not enough of just the average person. They hear Biden say, oh, we're printing more money. And they're like, oh, well, I guess there's more money. <laughs> well, more I think money. that there's a couple of things, right? Num number one, yes, a lot of people don't understand it, but there's something else. The left is really, really good at using emotionally charged issues to hijack the narrative. So what they do, for example, is like, okay, from a fiscal perspective, cutting Russia off from the dollar and so is, is the dumbest thing ever because it hastens, it forces them to go into China. It forces them away from dollars and it serves our long-term cause to have the world using dollars. Mm -hmm. But the moral justification is- Get them off the system. And that's the most important thing is the moral part. So the left is always on this sort of moral high ground that is like, the, and, and, and I said this before in our last interview, like that the ends justifies the means. And I'll tell you, if you go back in history, anytime countries or, or, or societies were operating under that paradigm of the ends justifies the means, bad shit happened. And bad shit happens. When the ends justify the means, it ends badly almost every single time. Well, nothing's off the table, right? Because if, if it's just about the ends, you'll, you'll do anything. You'll, well, you're going to end up killing an awful lot of people, putting me, an awful lot of people in, into poverty. Tell me how you can literally take a country on purpose from energy independence and make it dependent on foreign energy. Like, it's like, what? It's like, it's like what? Because of global warming because of the, you know, that's the most important thing. So again, they hijack the narrative. That's really what's happening. So they yeah. use these things like, it's just like morally, it's like this is the moral high ground. And I, I think the US is like no moral high ground on anything. I, it's, it's like a joke, you know, and it's so sad that I'm actually reading Al Jazeera now. Like I use Al Jazeera yeah. and BBC I and New York Times and Fox. I, try, I have to read all of them, trying to find what's, can I get some truth out of here? Yeah. I'm reading everything I can get my hands on to try to say, will someone say something different than everybody else? You know, it's scary. I hate to tell you, but the government of Qatar is probably not giving you the truth either. But I get, I get your point. I want you the have opposite. To, you have I want to read yeah. Tass, for example. I want to yeah. see Tass is saying, like, what's the other side? I was out for dinner with the Ukrainian uh, right when the invasion started. And I'm like, oh, this stuff of Nazification is ridiculous. He goes, it's actually true. He goes, no, there actually is Nazis. And, and he is so against Putin, he hated Putin. He was just devastated. He lost his business. He goes, well, that part, though, is actually true. So the fact of saying there's not Nazis in, and there's a whole big Nazi issue, and there is a Nazi party. Like literal Ukraine. Nazis. No, literally. Yeah, people no, no. can't believe it because we've so ruined the word, yeah. They literally are yeah. there. There's a problem with it there, and it's true. And the fact that we're denying that, like, why would we deny it? Like, okay, Putin could still be an asshole and that could be true. Yeah. Like, it's more complex, it's nuanced, right? Yeah. I mean, he could still has no right to invade a, so a sovereign country, but there are Nazis there and it is an issue. So the Nazis are the good guys now. That's, yeah, of course, how, that's how stupid they've made everything. Enemy my enemy, yeah. Is, yeah. I want to ask you about uh, FU money because I, you hear a lot of people say this, you know, once you get FU money, you can do whatever you want. And I would say with very, you know, I know a lot of people now that are, are very wealthy, some with the B in front of it, some with billions. And I would say with the exception of Peter Thiel, who actually puts his money where his mouth is and says unpopular things, I know a lot of rich people that are, that are more afraid, I think, than the average person because you suddenly start feeling you have more to lose. What, what, do you, what do you think about that? So I think there's different categories of people. There's people who are worth over a certain amount where they have fuck you money, whether that's a billion or a hundred million, whatever that is, they have enough money. But their businesses are susceptible to public shaming. So they have to be careful because they have a fiduciary responsibility. They can be canceled by the left. 
So they have to play the game. And inside, they're probably saying this is a bunch of shit and ridiculous nonsense, right? But they actually are playing the game that they have to play because they might be rich, but they also have responsibilities to shareholders and stuff. Like that. So that's understandable because they just have to do that or else they'll have huge issues. Like Disney. You think this guy from Disney really thinks that teaching three-year-olds and five-year-olds about um, transgenderism is a good thing? Who could think that? Who could Man, possibly think that's a good thing, he's right? He's digging his own grave and he doesn't even realize it. Or maybe he does realize it. Do you think I, he you know, maybe does realize he's it? He's giving it to the mob and, you know, it's just, it's, I don't understand. I don't, you know, I, I, you know listen, you're, you're gay, right? And, and you know, know, it's just that's shocking. You're, you're fucking, you're lucky because I wish I was gay because I like guys. I'm just... <laughs> Not gay. I get along really well with guys. It'd be yeah. a gift. I think it's a gift, yeah, by the way. Yeah. If but I could pass it on, I, I know would. you'd pass you it know? on, right? But but here's the thing. I I, I the, the 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 it's very. I have this theory. Okay, so let me unpack it a little bit here. Right. I am, but a humble listener. Gays were so terribly per- persecuted. Terrible shit happened to gay people. It was so fucked up in, in, in England, the United States. It was like people would go to jail. Yeah. People would like it was go, go committed for being correct. So there was a real fucking problem with gay people. And a lot of people are gay. I think a lot, I think it's a much larger portion of the population is bisexual or hassles. I think it's, it's a very substantial amount of people. It's fucked up that that had shit had to change. It had to change. Like it, it, and, and Hollywood, which has a large percentage, probably higher than the average, right? For whatever reason, because it's arts or whatever, right? And some very powerful people, like the Geffens of the world, they, yeah. they did shit. They had to do it. They, and it was good. And it was good. It had to change. But Wait, what do you mean by it? In other words, gays were, were persecuted. You couldn't yeah. come out of the closet. And you, you, I mean, it's just, it was fucked up to be gay. Yeah. And, it's, and I, think it's, I think it's disgusting, okay? I think it's unfair. And I think people should be able to be happy. It just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make, I couldn't imagine not being able to love the person I love and marry them. I just couldn't imagine living that for you. If you couldn't do that, how could you live that way, right? But people still live that way. That's fucked up. So I think it's good. That that part is good. That oh, was, you mean that there was representation? That right? it was that, taken that, out. It was, oh, made, it was normalized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, I think it's normalized. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It's normalized, isn't it? You get an award now. I right, mean, exactly. We're, right, right. we're over normalized. But, but, right, so, yeah. but that's the point. So, but that's good, good, good. All good. I think it's all good. Yeah. What's not good is then you have this other side of like transgender and all these other things that and people are still in town. That's what you want. Great. Bravo. Live the life you want. But we start to talk about very, very small, minute percentages. And now you're asking the world to sink to a different tune. So what happened was this sort of pendulum swung into madness. So, so, so what, what started was a wonderful thing that needed to happen has turned into some insane sort of like almost like a dystopian future where up is down, down is up, right is wrong and wrong is right. And it's like you see things like Leah Thomas is a perfect Simply you look at that and anyone, if an alien from out of space flew in, say, what the fuck? Are these people <laughs> fucking crazy? Like, what does Putin think of that? Like, imagine what Putin's saying. Well, He's, I think China's pretty freaking happy and chi- about and chi- it. Like China, like, these countries say, what's wrong with the United States? Like, are they crazy? Well, you know this thing about how on TikTok in America, it's all of this gender stuff with these 15-year-olds doing all the gender stuff. But they ban all of that in China, and do. it's a Chinese company. Make, yeah, you think that? Uh, I think they're trying. I think, think they, something's they, going they, on there. You know, he used to kid around the decadent West, the decay of of society. Well, this is the decay of 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 of, of normalcy. I, and, yeah, and, and one I, swipe I, at a time. But I think it's very much related to what happened with gay people, because because that was a good thing that had to change. And I think it somehow swung into this bizarre or alternate universe. And I think we're living that right now. And you know, you know, the really fucked up part of that as a gay person is that. When, when the, all that happens, then I see people who start freaking out about gay people, and I'm like, I actually somewhat get it at some level. <laughs> right. not, not at the equality level where you have to treat everyone equally, but like the fear, because you see them with, they want to do this five-year-old kids, they want them to be able to talk to state teachers and keep that private from the parents. I, I just, but you got, do you admire the, we were talking about branding before and messaging, like with COVID, that they got everyone to say, don't say gay, even though gay's not in the bill. It's like that, somebody there is doing some decent messaging. Well, it's, even if you hate the message, it's it's yes, but it's pretty easy when you have the entire news yeah. apparatus on your side. And like again, they squash out alternative opinions. Uh, I give DeSantis a tremendous amount of credit for always standing his ground. Um, and but I think though, 
Like, to me, at least, I never looked at that as being serious. I'm like, this is just nonsense. It's just more idiotic, woke nonsense. That And, and everyone knows this. Everyone, I'm assuming that you, you all know. Like, you all know this is crazy. That to teach the four-year-olds and first graders. I mean, apparently, not, apparently, the Disney employees don't know it. Yeah, well, that, you know, that's just like the most virtue-signaling bullshit I've ever fucking seen. It's just nonsense. And you know how liberal I am. I'm fucking yeah. liberal. Yeah. It's just idiocy. It's just fucking idiocy. We could use a little more like old school New York attitude, huh? It's common. Have a common, common sense. Common sense. Common sense. Common right? sense. I yeah. don't know, but I think you know. It's like you wonder about the, the righteous wrath of black people, and then I watched Twelve Years a Slave, and I get it. So it's, so it's like so it's, it's it's always more complicated. That's why in some I was just, it's almost like the analogy is like what happened with gay people and this. Yeah. This is like the dystopian end of the gays. Like where it's like now not about that anymore. It's almost with black people, like there needed to be, I mean, God, when you see things like that, you can't even believe it. It's shocking. Now I'm from a, a liberal family in, in, in Queens. Like I knew but with no prejudice, no, no one was prejudiced. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't like that, right? Isn't it crazy to think back on that? Like there, it wasn't, at least where we grew up. New there was York, not around, like there were, everybody was sort of there. Yeah. And nobody, like I, there was, I have no recollection of anything like that. So I remember when I was young, I was um, you know, in uh, first grade, second grade, there was busing. They started busing. And there was some riots. I remember this very vaguely. But in my household, like, there was never, like, the N-word. There was never anything. It was always, like, quality. You know, like, it was, it was just a very liberal household. So I didn't see any of that. But I think there's other parts of, of, of where I grew up and other, other parts of, of Queens where there was a lot of animosity over blacks being bussed in, integrating schools. It's a very complex issue. Yeah, and not to say there was nothing there. Robert Moses purposely put the bridges on Long Island low so the buses couldn't get through. I mean, so it's, it's not, yeah, it's so not like there's, a, there's a really yeah. fucked up history. And, yeah. and, and that's what I was almost saying with the, with the gay stuff, that is like there was a real problem that needed to be solved, but then it goes into La La Land because yeah. it overcorrects itself. Is there a business uh, metaphor for that? Something like that, where like you accomplish your goals as a business? Yeah, Facebook. Like, yeah, if you sort of figure it, you know what I mean? Like the gays accomplish the goal right. of equality, right? You can you can get married, you can adopt kids, you can have kids right. through surrogacy, all of that stuff. They The equality, it's here, but then you don't stop. There must be like a business version of yeah, that. Yeah, Facebook. You just keep going. Yeah, like like whatever the hell the they mission, thought, what was the mission? Mold, like, right. Let me tell you what the happened. The mission was for I, him I, to get I laid, think really good. Yeah. And there's a theory I have on this, too, that organizations tend to become exaggerations of what their values are. They exaggerate themselves over time. They end up becoming more and more and more extreme to what their core values are. They, they, they become, like, Stratton became more crazy. <laughs> if it's crazy, a little crazy, it gets crazy, 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 crazy. Yeah. Woke becomes more, more, more it, it always exaggerates because there's echo chamber and this sort of effect that happens of self-reinforcement, surrounding yourself with like-minded people. The ultimate echo chamber is Facebook, where they you know, skew the algorithms so you only see what you want to see, what you like to hear, so you're... You know your beliefs are reinforced. I've watched my one of my my uh, my third wife just become, you know, you know, going into the whole you know the cute thing because they fed her this stuff on on Facebook, you know. And I think it's it's really screwed up. When I look at Facebook, like this, the values of that company are just so fucked up. And I don't think he probably started off as a terrible guy. He wanted to get laid. He wanted to get laid, right? And then, like, he just, like, it became this gross exaggeration of almost like an, an Orwellian sort of spoon-feeding people what, you know, they want to hear and what you want them to hear at the same time. Are you telling me you're not excited to go into the metaverse led by humanoid robot Mark Zuckerberg? Are I'm you going? I'm, the good thing about the metaverse is it will not be led by Mark Zuckerberg. It will not be. Because the, by the nature of the metaverse and everything about blockchain, it's a decentralizing force. So centralized institutions, while they'll play some role, I, I believe that this next evolution is going to be away from centralized institutions. And we see that right now happening in the financial world with you have these new platforms popping up like SushiSwap and PancakeSwap. These are just names of decentralized exchanges. Yeah. That 15 guys will do more volume. A 15-man company decentralized can outperform Coinbase that has 8,000 or 15,000 employees it's so much more elegant and effective. And I, I think that over time, I don't think the metaverse will be dominated by people like Zuckerberg. I, I pray it's not.
So you're pretty, bull I know this obviously, but you're pretty bullish on, on crypto and, and all that. Are you surprised that Bitcoin didn't move that much in the last two months? After what happened in Canada, where they were freezing bank accounts, and you'd think that Bitcoin would have blown up. And then all the Ukraine stuff and the SWIFT system, as you mentioned before, you'd think that Bitcoin right now, or crypto in general, would all be skyrocketing. But it's actually not quite well, like that at the moment. So, so the way crypto, Bitcoin, let's call it Bitcoin, um, it, it's still in its infancy. And until it matures and really becomes more of a, a currency and a legitimate store of value, whichever one you, you want to look at it as, it's going to trade mostly like a growth stock. It's going to trade like a speculative investment. Mm -hmm. And that means there's going to be times where it's risk on and risk off. Right now, we're in a risk off environment. People are doing flights to safety. Six months ago, it was more risk on and the hot money was going into things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So that's part of it. Simply, it, it, it was very much correlated with the stock market. As the stock market, you know, stocks are going up, Bitcoin is going up, right? And also, it's like- so Is that like, partly just because people have more money then and they're just like, ah, I'll just put more money into Bitcoin too because I have more money. Partially, like, but what's happening is, is when people are, 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 are scared, Bitcoin is still not mature enough that people look at it as a flight to safety. It's just not. Um, you know, and that, that it was supposed to be that and it probably will be that, but it's still not there yet. And, um, and Bitcoin is still manipulated. In other words, there's still some very big people that fuck with it, right? But I think generally speaking right now, I think what you're seeing is that you've, I, I think it's healthy for Bitcoin, is you have this trading range of like, you know, 35, whatever it is, to, to the high was 60, and that's okay. And I think it, it, it takes time. Like, you know, when Bitcoin crashed down to $3,000 or $2,000, it stayed there for a while, and then ultimately it has another rally. So I think it's building a base right now, and then ultimately it will go substantially higher. I think this pressure's, you know, and again, that's just my point. I'm gonna tell you to buy because of that. <laughs> but, 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 you know, I think that the, the nature of Bitcoin, the, the, the scarcity, um, the stickiness that people tend to hold it for the long term. There's a lot of things that I think are over the long term putting upward pressure on the price. What are you doing with your money these days? What, like, what are you I'm, in, in I'm, this I'm, like crazy I'm time? I'm heavily in. into into the crypto, DeFi, metaverse. Um, very much into that, and. Uh, but I don't have to invest my money so much. It's not what I do really. My, 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 my model is more people will actually give me stakes in their companies for, for in exchange for advice and, and using my brand. So I have a very, sort of a very much of a risk-free model of getting involved in companies. Now, when companies that are bigger and more, well, let's say the better deals, so I'll put money in. I don't mind doing that. But very often the more speculative deals, they're looking for advice. They're looking for to get connections opened up to them. Um, so I do a lot of that. And, and I also invest in the, in the off blockchain world as well. I have a great iced tea company that, um, that I'm involved, which is blowing up right now. So, you know, for me, you can pimp them out. You can, come on. Yeah, well, you, you, it's nothing, you, you can buy the product, you can buy the iced yeah. tea, which is great. It's called Mod Talk Iced yeah. Tea. There you go, come and on. It's unbelievable. Come on, you're yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. It's great iced tea. It's all over the place. And in yeah. the Northeast right now, it'll go nationwide this year, you know, throughout the year. Um, but, you know, here's, here's, what, here's what I believe. The safest, best investment in the world for anybody. You want an investment tip? Ready for this? Buy the S&P 500 in a Vanguard, no load, mutual fund, hold it, reinvest the dividends, and just set it and forget it. And that is your best bet of all. So that does show me you're still bullish on America to some degree, right? Well, I, listen, I, you know, again, I think that America's values and it's global positioning. And I said the middle class is going to get squeezed. But the 500 largest corporations, they're running this show anyway. I mean, they're, the, they're behind all this whole, you know, you know, military industrial complex. I mean, they're in charge. And you know, what you're doing is when you're buying that, you're buying the collective ingenuity mm -hmm. of America. And for all faults, the system is amazing. What we have here is, a, is an economic system is powerful. It, it rewards hard work, it rewards ingenuity. Um, and unlike other countries where success is frowned on, standing out is frowned on, here we, 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 we worship or we, we emulate, we elevate people who have taken risks and make a lot of money. What, what would you do if you were CEO of one of these companies that was going woke? So if you were the head of Disney right now, 
knowing everything I know about you, and now the company seems like it's in upheaval, and the board's angry at you, and people are, bo I mean, it's hard to gauge how much of it's real, but if, if you had a general sense of what's going on right now, and they're coming to you, what, what would you do different than this guy? I, probably, I mean, DeSantis I, I probably would lose down. my job. Yeah. You know, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. you know, because I, I would simply, I, I would have, what I would have done is I would have never let it get this far. I would have been having this, I believe the problem usually comes way before that. It's like this virus, this cancer that's forming and spreads and it spreads and it's allowed to keep spreading. And before you know it, the inmates are ruling the asylum. So I would have been, you know, carefully, you know, well, let's say almost daily messaging, you know, things that were against that whole thing, supporting, as you know, I feel about gay people, whatever, but I would, you know, have a very, very different type of corporate culture. Um, but that said, you know, in the way the world works right now, it's almost like you get canceled like that. Yeah. So, you know, to, um, I, it's pretty high and mighty of me to say I'll stick to my core beliefs, but, you know, I might have to be forced to simply for fiduciary responsibility, or I'd be fired as the CEO for not pretending to be woke. Do you think that's the move, is that so many of these companies probably, even if they don't fully get it, are maybe not taking of care of their no fiduciary listen. responsibility? Understand. Meaning they're not making the right decisions listen, listen, for, the, listen, for the company, for the, yeah. Let me give you the, 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 the crux. You just brought up a great point, okay? It's the ultimate diversion play. But whoa, we love the environment. And we love gay people and transgender. And we're gonna fucking destroy people in sweatshops in Indonesia. And we're gonna destroy, like, literally there's such awfulness. Nike, I mean, what they're doing, I think like, these companies are exploiting people all over the world. They're polluting, they're, they're, they're doing all this terrible shit, raping and pillaging the village on a fucking daily basis, pretty much. All of them, they, you know, without, almost without exception, with some less than others, but, but they're woke. They're good corporate, they're good citizens of the world. So it's the ultimate thing for like Apple to say that like, we're woke. They're really? a bad guy in a Disney movie. That's what I keep telling you. It's like people. literally, it's that, yeah. it's that much of a like, we're woke, we're good people, we're moral, we're moral, we're moral. And they just for destruction, destruction. So they, and that left is amazing at that. They just watch here, yeah, we're woke, we're woke. And they just fucking, that means we could spill as much oil as you want. We could exploit as many people from undeveloped countries as we want. We could just like literally avoid taxes and keep money in different countries and use clever transfer mechanisms so we don't pay our fair share of taxes. But we're woke, we're good, we're good. But they'll give you a shelf on and we love the environment that says Black Lives Matter or something. We love the environment. Oh, it's gross. And the guy, and the Black Lives Matter guys, like, they're, aren't they in jail now? Under indictment? What happened to Black Lives Matter? Well, they're under Did indictment. They solve it, was a, the... it was like a scam, right? Yeah. So yeah. like this great cause, like, of course, Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, Yellow Lives Matter, Lives Matter, right? But these people were just like freaking crooks. They, they're under indictment, aren't they? They're under indictment, and, the, <laughs> and the, the woman that was the head bought three houses in Malibu or something. I mean, Stop these, it. Did they send Well, one? she's got nothing on what's the name on, uh, who's the one from the, 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, senator from the West Coast, Representative Maxine. Uh, oh, Maxine Waters, who's got <laughs> she's got like a twenty million dollar house in Hancock Park while she's running Crenshaw or something. I mean, these people, isn't it? It's you, but that's what it's I always sick. tell people. It's like you got to admire the monster, you have not to. yeah. But by the way, they don't even touch fucking Argentina. They yeah, don't even touch at it. the level of the, corruption, pfft, yeah. there's a woman in Argentina. This woman, like Christina or something or other, yeah. who's like literally like just. She runs the whole fucking country. Oh, she's like the wealthiest woman in the world. She's like a, a Putin of Argentina, this woman. And everyone loves her. And she's like, she's like raping and pillaging. And she's the fucking, you know, the kids sing the, thank you, Christina, for the house roof over our head and the food not there. Yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully this will air after I get back from Argentina. I'll be shot. Yeah, Argentina. you could be in a lot of trouble in Argentina. No, but it's, it's yeah. amazing that, like, you see this, this weird undercurrent of politics. It's almost like I... I I hate to say this, because I don't really mean it, but there's like some part of me, like, I like just G, because at least you know what you're getting. You know it's completely corrupt and like no rights. You have no rights. Like, okay, get it. That's the play. I said, oh, the playing field. It's almost like better than like, I'm saying like, you, they're pretending to be different. I don't it's really, so you know, twisted. It's, I, well, no, no. So I, you know what I'm saying? Though? It's like, I, I heard Bill Maher maybe a year ago say something like that. Like they can get shit done right. because they're not messing around. There's yes. something admirable about that. But, and here I know people are gonna cut this exact part to make us look like we're right. supporting China, but it comes at an obvious insane cost. All of the, everything that we love about life is the cost of them being able to build a city real quick. But not and, what they love about life. Like I, think that, mm -hmm. like, I think one thing I've learned from traveling around the world so much is that the world doesn't share our values. Many countries don't really care that much about free speech. They, they like it, they don't value it like we do. 
They didn't grow up with it. It's not part of their core belief systems. People in Russia love Putin. I was there a few years back. Everyone loves this guy. They, I said, what is strongly, we love a strong, strong leader. leader yeah. We don't care. Oh, we just want a strong leader. Pro, we, that's what they want there. All right, now, they probably have second thoughts right now, I'm guessing, right? A lot it's of- a little hard to tell, don't you think? Like, you know, we keep saying the, the meme is like we've destroyed Russia. I don't every- believe any of it. I, yeah. I don't believe any of it, by the way. I'm not saying that we haven't, but I don't believe any of it. But I- why aren't we seeing videos coming out of Russia? I don't know, riots in the streets, toppling the, the you know, whatever. Like- here's, here's, here's the same analogy. Like, I was out for dinner with a Ukrainian who hated Putin, who was devastated over the invasion. He's like, yeah, we have Nazis. It's like, like, yeah, it's like there's more to this whole thing. There's, there's issues. Like, you know, like Ukraine was part of Russia. Like, it's, it's much more complicated than the world has been. I don't know why. It's like, it's just, listen, again, I don't think it's, a, I think it's a terrible thing. And Isn't I wish- it annoying to have to do the caveats every time you're talking about it's, something? It's really sad, but, you yeah. know, um, but the bottom line is, is that, this is not enough to start World War III. And I resent when, when someone like Zelensky, is a US citizen, says, if you don't save us, if we don't, we're, we're gonna, it's World War III. What? I mean, like, what? Like, I, I don't know, I don't want World War III. Like, so we don't help you, we don't give you more guns and ammunition, it's World War III. I don't believe that for a, a fucking second, just so you know. I don't believe that for a, a second. I don't think there's any way Putin will ever go into a NATO country. Yeah. No, no way. I don't think that's going to happen. And by the way, I think Putin's looking like a paper tiger a little bit right now. But I think also to give a madman, and it seems like he's a madman right now. No, maybe he's not. But it seems like he's acting that way. Uh, you need to give a madman an exit ramp. Right. <laughs> like, let's give the madman. Okay, let's say Especially he's Especially one with nukes, right? Give like, the guy, he's got 5,000 nuclear bombs. Let's give the guy an exit ramp. And like, maybe it's okay that he takes part of Ukraine and that becomes part of, of, of Russia. And people stop dying. Like, why not like think more pragmatically than Putin bad, Ukraine good? I, I, I just don't believe that for a fucking split second. Jordan, you'd have to think for a minute. To I, know. That. I know. I that, know. What, what, what do you say? The people on CNN are going to be telling people that they are allowed to even, think? Even like the people on Fox, with the exception yeah. of Tucker, yeah. okay, who finally said what I was thinking. I've been thinking that the whole time. I mean, ask my, you know, my, my, my wife. I've been saying it all She's like, really? I'm like, I said, she's like, it's so terrible. Like, it is terrible. It's awful. But. There's more to this than they're saying. Much more, they're saying, you know? And here's another part to this whole thing, you know? When the whole world gangs up on one thing that you have to know, it's like, it's like, it's just like, it's like the certainty everyone else has got to tell you there's something wrong. Isn't that the thing? That's, I think, the thing that's got my bell going off about this. I'm not saying I know exactly what's right and I'm with you. You can't just invade a sovereign nation. Okay, nobody's defending Putin. But the, to watch the swarm, Basically, every single person. Except China and Saudi Arabia at, well, and the fi- UAE. They're, so is that really, do you feel like we're actually in the, in the midst of it? I mean, Biden said it just a couple days ago. New world order is on the way. Odd he didn't say that during the election. Do you remember him saying anything about a new world order coming? This guy has done more damage to the country. It's amazing. It's like almost a talent. And he doesn't And you could destroy know. something that quickly in just two years. With, with Trump, you could hate Trump. There's no way this would have ever happened with Trump as president. No fucking way. Trump is looking pretty freaking good right yeah, no now. No way right? this would happen. Yeah. No way. It's, yeah. just, it's just, and not because Putin was, thinks he's a madman. It just wouldn't have happened because, you know, there was just, there was just like this. And by the way, let me just, Putin, so he calls Putin a war criminal. Oh, well, that's helpful for, <laughs> that's gonna make the war stop. So now it's actually right. It's so now, so now you give the guy no chance. Yeah. He can never stop because if he loses, he goes to the Hague and gets hung at the Hague. So now you create no possible peace solution. That's the that's the fucking arms manufacturers moving Biden's lips. War, 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 death, death, death. Money, money, money. Okay, and instability, instability. It's so fucking obvious. Like, how could he say that? And it's like, I was, I was like, what a moron, you know? And they keep telling us we're not going to World War III, we're not going to World War III, but we're going to arm the guy, we're going to talk about a no-fly zone so that we'd have to shoot down planes, we're going to cut them off the banking system. Like, we're doing an awful lot of shit, 
I don't know wh where you have to sign the doc that He's says- begging for no fly zone? Score. Fuck you. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to <laughs> destroy my country too, Zelensky? I mean, and really? I mean, I understand you're in a bad spot, but like, do you want to destroy the world? You want to take the whole, that's what will happen. If you still put a no fly zone there, that's it. They won't do it. Don't, they won't happen. There's no, there's no, no fly zone. I don't care what Putin does. It's not, they're not, it can't be that stupid yeah. to go head to head with someone 5,000 nuclear bombs. Eh? But we've got a lot of wizards who got us into a lot of other words that are telling us a no fly zone will be just fine. But sure, they've never gotten anything right before, but you know, the people, maybe this is some, the, the one. generals that are saying Odds, that are just, are just people that are saying because they want to go on TV. They can't possibly believe. One, I forgot who it was saying, yeah, you could have this, uh, we could have this um, humanitarian no flaws. Oh yeah, yeah sure, the, that's the humanitarian gonna corridor, that's what they call it. <laughs> that's gonna work out really <laughs> fucking well, you know? And and I also think that by the way, I just, I, I, you know, I go on and on about this. I just I just think that, that arming Ukraine is just causing more lives to be lost. All it's right. just killing more Ukrainians. Belford, finish me up with this. The world's nutty, okay, everyone gets it. We moved to Florida, life is good here. You're feeling good about life. Um, when I do my show, my daily show every day, I'm always trying to tell people at the end, like, I don't want you to get crazy about politics. I want you to do something you're supposed to be doing. Give the people the, the Jordan Bell for it, like why everything's gonna be okay and why you gotta just keep going. Even, even if you're worried that it's not gonna be okay. Oh no, I think it's everything's gonna be okay. So let's that, see, what, what happens is, even when like there's a recession, they say there's a 3% contraction of the economy. What does that really mean? So if you, if you're, if you made $50,000 last year and then suddenly your income goes to 48,500, you're still paying your rent. You're cutting back a little bit, but you're still living. Like, I, I think like what happens is, is people that are living in powered lives, people that are willing to work hard and put one foot in front of the other, you're going to be okay. There, there's always a path forward to make money, to live a great life, to be empowered in this country, in the United States, right? It just makes it a little bit harder. <laughs> they just make it harder. They, instead of having a, a tailwind, you have a little bit of a headwind. Mm -hmm. But that's it, you just pedal a little bit faster. Listen, when I got out of jail, I was saddled with a very large fine. And by law, the maximum they could make me pay is 25% of my income. You know what I said to myself when I got out of jail? I said. I'm not gonna try to evade this fine. I'm just gonna make so much fucking money <laughs> that the 25% won't even be a pimple on my ass. And that was my attitude. I'll make so much money. I'll just pay that. Win-win for everybody. How quick did you knock it out? Well, no, I still pay, but- Oh, you're still- But you're there's still. no one getting, no, there's no more investors left. Yeah. Investors, there's no more investors. Investors haven't gotten money for 10 years. It's just like this, another two years, I gotta pay this as some, it's ridiculous, okay? Yeah. But the point is, I never try to look at that as, I mean, well, then I'll just either stop working or I'll try not to pay. No, I'll just work even harder. So if the world gets a bit tougher, if politicians like Biden create a, a playing field that's just sort of tilted against you, just pedal a little bit faster. It's worth it because you know what? You know, we live once, right? And where you are in your life, right? You can't control what happens randomly, but you are the master, you're running your ship. You're the master of your own destiny. You have the ability, I don't care who you are, as long as you're healthy, you're breathing, you can improve your lot in life. If you want, every human being has the ability to get ahead in this country. If you're somewhere else, I can't, some countries, it's, it's, it's difficult, but even there, you can always get ahead. And I think that all of this stuff is noise, it's disturbing, you can worry about it. Yes, you can worry about it, but to think for a second that it will stop you from living an empowered life, that's a story that you tell yourself as an excuse because you're not willing to do what it takes to get what you want in life. And I, I firmly believe that that, it's, that, that it's a story that you tell yourself that, oh, it's the government, it's the economy, it's my parents, it's the news. It's all story. And once you stop with that story and, and learn what you have to learn, go out there and do what you gotta do, you can get ahead in this world. So do we uh, start a company now or do we drink tequila? I think we drink tequila. <laughs> Jordan Belfort, ladies and gentlemen. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about lifestyles, instead of nonstop yelling, check out our lifestyle playlist. And if you wanna watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're both right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.